This is an overview of the lower limb in which I am going to highlight the structural components of the lower limb including bones, joints, muscles, nerves and vessels and how these components are organized in order to better serve the function of the lower limb. Now let's deal with muscles. Muscles of the gluteal region consist predominantly of extensors, rotators and abductors of the hip joint. In addition to moving the thigh on a fixed pelvis, these muscles also control the movements of the pelvis relative to the limb which bears the body weight, that's to say weight bearing or stance limb, while the other limb swings forward, swing limb, during walking. Now to give more description on this, both gluteus medius and minimus are abductors of the hip. And this is, but this is not a very common event. The action that you must remember and to which the muscles are strongly called into play is their tilting action on the pelvis, preventing adduction at the hip when the weight of the body is supported on one leg. For example, when standing on the right leg, the right gluteus medius and minimus contract and prevent the pelvis sagging on the left. Thus, in walking, the muscles of the two sides are alternately contracting. Paralysis of the muscles will cause the pelvis to drop on the opposite side when the weight is taken on the affected leg. This is called Trendelenburg's sign. In which case, the gait is markedly affected. The trunks will sway from side to side toward the weight-bearing limb to prevent tilting the pelvis on the other side. And this is called waddling gait. To continue with muscles, the major flexor muscles of the hip, iliopsoas, which consists of psoas major and iliacus, they do not originate in the gluteal region or the thigh. Instead, they are attached to the posterior abdominal wall and descend through the gap between the inguinal ligament and pelvic bone to attach to the proximal end of the femur. Muscles of the thigh are separated into three compartments by layers of fascia. In the thigh, there are medial, also called adductor, anterior, also called extensor, and posterior, also called flexor compartments. The muscles of the medial compartment of the thigh are the muscles that you can move between fingers and thumb. Since they do not wrap around a bone, like the anterior muscles. Since they mainly function as adductors, three of them are named as such, adductors longus, brevis, and magnus. The others are pectineus, gracilis, and obturator externus. Most muscles in the medial compartment act mainly on the hip joint except gracilis, which extends distal to the knee. Gracilis is a long slender muscle, as its name indicates, and is often used for muscle grafting. Muscles in the anterior compartment predominantly extend the knee, and the biggest is the quadriceps femoris muscle. In the posterior compartment, the large muscles are called hamstring muscles, and they act on the hip, causing extension of the hip and flexion of the knee. So they act, most of them, they act on the hip and the knee. They include semitendinosus, semimembrinosus, and biceps femoris muscles, which are the true hamstrings, together with the hamstring portion of adductor magnus. These muscles were called hamstrings because their tendons were used to hang up hams in meat shops. In ancient times, it was common for soldiers to hit their opponent's horse posterior to the knee in order to cut the tendons of hamstrings so the horse and the rider will fall over. Even in today's language some people still use the term hamstring to indicate helplessness. In the leg, the muscles in the leg are divided into lateral, which is also called fibular, anterior and posterior compartments. Muscles in the lateral compartment predominantly evert the foot. Muscles in the anterior compartment dorsiflex the foot, like tibialis anterior, 
Others also extend the digits like extensor digitorum and extensor hallucis longus. In the calf, posterior compartment, the muscles are arranged in superficial and deep groups. The superficial group of muscles forms a powerful mass in the calf since they are required to maintain the upright posture and in walking. They include gastrocnemius, soleus, and a vestigial muscle called plantaris. Soleus, gastrocnemius, and plantaris are collectively called the triceps suri since they have a common insertion via the calcaneal tendon into the calcaneus. Please remember that soleus is not related to the sole and that its name is derived from its shape, which looks like a flat sole fish. In propulsion, the powerful soleus overcomes the inertia of the body, like a bottom gear of a car. However, when the movement is underway, the quicker acting gastrocnemius greatly increases the speed, like the top gear of a car. Gastrocnemius, gaster means belly, is called so since it forms most of the prominence of the calf. Soleus has an extensive venous plexus within the body of the muscle and around it. This forms the main muscle pump or peripheral heart, which returns blood to the heart against the gravity. These veins are also a common site of deep venous thrombosis, DVT, that may occur after immobilization. In the deep part of the posterior compartment, the muscles have their counterparts in the anterior compartment. They are tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. The muscles of the deep part of the posterior compartment thus plantar flex the foot and flex the digits. It's important to understand that there are four stages of walking, that is weight bearing, push off, swing through, and heel strike. The muscles of the anterior crural compartment are important in the swing through stage of walking when they keep the toes clear off the ground when the non-weight bearing leg is being carried forward ready for the next step. At the moment of heel strike, these muscles, muscles of the anterior compartment, they contract as they elongate. This is called action of paradox, to lower the foot gently to the ground. In the push-off stage, the deep fibers of soleus overcome the inertia, as has been mentioned earlier. Flexor hallucis longus is the most powerful of the deep calf muscles. Structurally, it is described as beef to the heel. It flexes the big toe, which is the takeoff point, that's to say, the last part to leave the ground in walking. It should be remembered that specific muscles in each of the three compartments in the leg also provide dynamic support for the arches of the foot, as we will describe in a moment. Muscles found entirely in the foot, or intrinsic muscles of the foot, they modify the forces produced by the tendons entering the toes from the leg and provide another support for the longitudinal arches of the foot when walking. The muscles of the sole are classically described as being arranged in four layers. The superficial muscles are longer than the deep muscles and the muscles of the foot are mainly specialized to help maintain the arches of the foot. Therefore, many of the muscles of the sole rarely perform the functions indicated by their names. For example, abductor hallucis or even abductor digiti minimi, which is supposed to abduct the little toe, a movement that is so unlikely. So these muscles, instead, they have gross functions rather than delicate ones, like those of the palm of the hand. The arches of the foot are supported by the same engineering methods that are used to maintain a bridge. Some tarsal bones are wedge-shaped, for example, the cuneiforms, and act as keystone in a bridge. The inferior edges of the stones also are tied together with metal staples to counteract the tendency of the lower edges of the stones to separate when the arch is weight-bearing. This is represented 
at the plantar side of the foot by the strong ligaments that tie the bones together, for example, the long and short plantar ligaments. Tie beams can also be used to connect pillars of an arch or a bridge and prevent their separation. In this respect, the abductor halluses and the abductor digiti minimi, they, li they act like tie beams for the medial and lateral longitudinal arches. Finally, a suspension bridge is held by slings. In this respect, the tendons of tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, and the peroneae, which are present in the lateral crural compartment, they act like cables that support a suspension bridge.